G'day guys, welcome back. Look at this cute little dragon mold that I got. I um, can't even remember where I got him from. Etsy, Amazon, something like that. I've had all these molds for months and months and months and I've got, I haven't even used a lot of them. But what I did get is this holographic nail powder and I want to try it out today. It just looks like a grayish, silverish kind of a color. But um, I want to try it out today just to see what happens. Doesn't really look all that spectacular there. But I'm going to dust the dragon with it uh, and then I'm going to pour black on and as you know the black really makes all your holographic and iridescent colors pop and chameleon changing color powders all that kind of thing so when you buy this and this is what it's called here hollow nail powder it's a 35 micron which is a nice gives you a nice effect I think I bought four of them actually because when I did my research, this one was a really good one. So that's it there. It says on the back, CE-QCF01. So it comes with those little like eyeshadow brush things, foam brushes. But I don't want to use those. I'd rather use my normal little paint brushes. So I've got different sizes, maybe to get into little tiny areas. There's a hair. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to just get started. And, um, and then I'm going to stop and mix up my resin because I didn't want it sitting there going off while I did this. So let's just get started. I'm going to use the bigger one first for this bigger area. So if you don't want to watch me dusting a dragon, feel free to fast forward. And I don't want to get like too much like too thick because only so much can stick to the surface and the rest of it's just wasted and it was quite expensive so I'll just be wary about not putting too too much on there just a little bit on my brush and then really spread it you could if you wanted to you know have different colors um, I have got another gorgeous mold that I want to use and I'm going to put different like chameleon changing colors in the same mold and uh, and see how that goes but that'll be coming up I've got so many things I want to do you guys and I just don't have the time to do them all I've got so many ideas rushing around my little pea brain and um, I just want to get them all done for you or well, for me too because I'm curious to see what they're all going to do um, acrylic pouring ideas and resin ideas lots of different ideas that I want to do and you know my big octopus mold I want to do the um, the holographic powders on that because I've only used it once and I did those little iridescent um, what were they oh the cellophane the iridescent cellophane and I want to do that again I want to dust him like different colors on the different tentacles so that's going to be coming up and I want to do some kind of beach themes because I've got one of those, um, you know, the, the molds that make those like bubbles or foam or froth or something. I want to do those with the coasters. Got so many things I want to do. Not enough time. And the guy's coming next week to put... Um, cut a big hole in my wall behind me and put in a sliding door and a dog door because this this studio that I'm in my garage it's going to become my new dog room and I'm going to be building a new studio which is starting in the new year I will do some videos on that so that you can sort of follow me along follow my little extension studio journey it's actually working okay getting into all those little crevices because it's a soft brush I thought I might have to use my smaller brush. Oh, I'm all done. I'm all done. There we go. I'm done. I think that's it. All right, let me put you on pause. Don't think I really needed this little guy. And uh, I'm going to mix up my black resin. And I'll be right back. So see that wall there? <laughs> that's the wall. It's going to be 
have a big hole cut into it, basically knocked down to about here. They're going to put a new post in, take that post out and a big sliding door going in there, which means I have to move this. I'm going to move all of those. I don't know whether I can just drag it or probably everything will fall off. I have to move this. These are these are my drawers where all my moulds are kept, you see. All my moulds in here. It's great little great little thing. Um yeah, so I need to move all of that. And um I just don't know where to put everything. <laughs> so anyway, that's my job for later on today. Move it all so that um they can start cutting a hole through that wall. Anyway, uh, let's finish this pool. Right, so here we are again. I've got my resin mixed up. I just did 100 grams. It's the Platinum 360 Plus, so it can cure nice and fast. Eight hours I can demold it. Uh, I'm going to put the, I'm going to use the Lorez Black, Midnight Black. And then I also want to do some more of these. These are those bubble thingies that I told you about. You can put on coasters to make it look as if it's sea foam or froth and things like that. So I cut this one into like a circle. And anyway, I need to do some more. So that's it there. I'm going to try and make my own mold because I need more than just that. And that's a bit small. So I'm going to try. I don't know how hard. <laughs> it's probably going to be quite difficult, but I'm going to try. So anyway, I'm going to put a little bit. I'm going to put some white cast and craft in that. It's nearly empty, so it's upside down. I'm just going to take a little bit of this and put some white in that. They're nearly empty this one. I have got another couple of bottles so that's good. I do like my cast and craft. There we go. I'll keep it upside down somewhere else so it drains down. Okay, so that's that one. I'll do that in a minute. It can just sit there while I do the dragon. Okay, so I don't, don't think I'm going to even use all of this. So I, I won't colour it all, just in case I want to do something else with a little bit of clear resin. I don't know what else I could do with a small amount, but we'll see. I can always add more of it to this if I need it. I just wasn't sure how much it would take, that's all. Let's just put a little bit of that in there shouldn't need too much. I've got about a third of a cup, I guess. This is a 4 ounce or 120 ml little espresso shot cup, which is really good for little things in resining, mixing up small amounts. So that's nice and opaque, I think. You want this, I mean, if you don't want to use black, use something else, but make sure it's an opaque colour, not a transparent colour. Which I could do with a little bit more I think. Just wipe that tip off so I don't get resin in my paste. <laughs> Ruby's looking at me through the window there, my little dog Ruby. She wants to come in. She's usually here under the table in her bed when I'm working but I forgot about her today. She's looking at me longingly through the window. And that window is going to be turned into a door as well. Oh gosh, I hope I don't have to move those two big things as well. We'll see. Maybe they can stay. All right, so here we go. And I put it into this little cup just so that I can pinch it and then get into all those little areas. If I try and pour it with the plastic cup, it's going to be a little bit more tricky to do. All right, here we go. I'll just sort of start in the bigger areas. This is the deepest area here through the centre. And hopefully the resin will just sort of find its own way. Oops, that can go in there like that. That goes across by the looks of it. Mm. There's a claw there. 
that and there's a claw down here try and get in there a bit more in the tail okay I'm gonna stop there and just push the resin in to those little crevices and I'll use this little thing with the cotton wool on the end so it doesn't mark my mold so I don't want to touch the bottom I don't want to dislodge the powder I just want to sort of push the top layer of resin into all those little crevices go on in you go where else all oh, the heads done Get a little bit in there it um, doesn't matter if I go over the, the top of the resin. I'll just get my little baby wipe and tidy that up. There's a, that's a claw around there. And I need a little bit more in that little tail there. I don't want to overfill it and then I have too much sanding to do with all the little bits and pieces. I need some more in the tail. I'll have to make sure that your table is nice and level for this little intricate little thing that it is okay there we go oh, I made up just the amount of black didn't I oops what's that no that's I've gone over there I'm trying to move that put a little, put a little bit too much in all right now if if I have put too much resin into something what I'll do is I'll just get my paper towel like that and I'll just pop it over the top and then lift it straight up and that'll take a little bit out you see and kind of level it there's that little island there I did put a bit much in All right, I'll just let it settle for a, a couple of minutes and if I need to pop a tiny bit more in I will but I won't go crazy like I did before because that was too much and it overflowed there's a little island there I'm just going to wipe around the edges that's pretty good look at that here we go all right so now I'll put a tiny bit more in but I'm just going to drizzle this time rather than put so much in that it all kind of overflowed and because it's the back I'm happy to spray it with alcohol if it was the front I wouldn't spray it with alcohol because it leaves like droplet marks so I don't like that All right, I think that is plenty. Just wanted to kind of dome just a tiny bit. All right, that's it. Let's give it a bit of a spritz. And then while I've got this out, I'm going to spritz this because it's got, you know, lots of little intricate designs on it there. And if I don't, I'm going to get lots of bubbles. And I don't want bubbles in my bubbles. Can I finish stirring that? I think so. So I'll spritz this and then pour this white on and then just spread it with the stick. And make sure it's gone into all the little crevices again don't want anything that's missed out because that will then be a hole when you turn this out it's only very thin it's only like one millimeter it's very very thin you can cut it with scissors into the shape that you want Just give it a bit of a whoops a bit of a drop Okay, so now the next thing you need to do is, and I'm just going to put it on here, because I want to catch that resin. So just with my stick, I'm just going to run over the top and swish that off, and over the top, pushing down, 
clean that off and then I just do it a few times to make sure I've got all that excess resin off like so okay I think that's it now I can take my little piece back I haven't made up made too much of a mess there we go all right so a little two for one video for you hey now with this guy I'm just gonna drop him as well there was a little bubble there that just popped and a few bubbles come up so I'll just give him another little spritz it's a good way of getting bubbles out I mean you can't always do that with all your molds but if you've got a little mold that's um quite solid like this one it's pretty easy just to pick him up and drop him from a bit of a height now I can just put a little bit more in that is settled okay that's it last spritz for you last spritz for you and I am done okay so I will be back um let me get my glove off I will be back shortly in about eight hours but for you just a split second I can't get my glove off you guys <clears throat> all right let's try a different way see you soon I'm back it's a few hours well what's the time it's 20 past five in the afternoon um I actually don't remember what time I started this it was sometime this morning so it's still bendy I mean this kind of stays bendy anyway even when it's set um I did these a few days ago but you gotta be careful it'll snap but let's see if I can get it off it's very thin see so you gotta be careful you don't tear it probably could have left it a couple more hours maybe <laughs> oh gosh it does feel very stretchy still but look I've started so I'll have to keep going I'm just sort of um, protecting it from stretching by using my thumb like that to sort of push it out of the way but you know me I'm very impatient I don't like waiting I'll just loosen that all the way around and there it is ta-da there's our little piece um, you can pick off any little overflow bits actually you probably won't do it now because it might tear you can snip them off when it's dry and um, get a little blade on the inside so there we go there's that so that's what it looks like before you trim all the, the edges off but see it's really small like I don't even how, know how you would fit that into a coaster mold I should use one of these little tiny ones but even in that, that's my smallest one. It's still got gaps on the side. Unless you, I don't know. It's not ideal. They're not very big. You'd have to sort of cut it. Oh, actually, maybe if maybe if I cut it in half that way, and then like bring your sand up here. I don't know. Anyway, they're they're, they're only small. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but. You know, if you've got some leftover resin, you might as well use it. Okay, let's um, let's do this guy, hey? Let's move that out of the way. Keen to see what my little dragon's going to look like. Hope he comes out nicely. Oh, it seems to be coming out easily. No, I have to be careful here when I don't break the tail, hey? It's always a worry when you're doing little fiddly pieces that they don't snap off oh, oh gosh I thought I'd broken it oh all right I think he's out there he is look at that just google dragon silicon mold and I guess they'll come up with a whole heap of things uh, actually you know what I should have I should have wiped my um my mold around the edges because look I've got all these little bits of um powder stuck to the edge <laughs> that's going to be fun to clean off isn't it all my little bits of powder anyway i'll do that later 
Shall we see how it how it looks? Shall we see? Oh, I don't want to see in case it's awful. All right, let's do this. Are you ready? Oh, it's just grey. Well, that didn't work. Why didn't that work? I have a grey dragon. Why didn't that work? Oh dear. I have a grey dragon. I have no idea why that didn't work. It looks shiny in there. Look at that. Why didn't you work, dragon? Oh, that's disappointing. I have no idea why that didn't work, you guys. Maybe I didn't put it on thick enough? It's a tiny little bit of holographics showing there. Is this a matte mould? Maybe that's why. Is this a matte mould? It might not be a shiny mould. Could be. I don't know. You can see on here, you can see the, the dust there shining. That is very odd. I don't know if that's a matte mould or a shiny mould. I guess it's not really shiny. Hang on one sec. I have some clear nail polish. I wonder if that'll do anything. I'm so disappointed. I honestly thought that was going to be amazing. Is that doing anything? Hmm. Well, I don't know what to tell you. I wonder if it's got to do with the fact that it's um, a matte mould. Because I've seen this holographic powder and it works amazing. Hmm. Okay. That doesn't seem to be doing anything. Wow. I'm going to get nail polish all over my paintbrush now. I'm willing to try anything at this stage. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh well, I guess it's not going to work. Um, we'll try this again in a different mould. I have a cute grey gray dragon. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, I showed you how to make those. I don't know if I'll put this video up. Might just be worth not doing it. Anyway, if I do, you'll be seeing it. See, I, I don't get it. See, I've got the they've got the sparkle happening there. You know when you the dust or the powder all comes up to the top. So it is working there, but for some reason it's not working here. Any only thing I can put it down to is that. It doesn't really look like a shiny mould. It looks like a, a matte mould to me. And it's got a tinsy little bit of shimmer because of the powder. All right, I'm going to have to try that again on a different mould and uh, see what happens. So 
um, yeah, bear with me. I'll, I'll get another mould and I'll, I'll try it out and see what happens, hey? All right, well, thanks for watching. Wasn't very successful, but I guess we may have learnt something. Maybe that we can't use um, matte moulds. Very interesting. All right, I'll try again with another mould and see what happens. So thanks for watching, if you're still with me. I'm sorry it didn't work out the way as planned, but we learn this way. All right, I'll see you real soon for the next video. Okay, bye for now. Righto, guys, I thought I will just tack this on to the end of the video. I've got these little fish, little koi fish. Now, these are shiny. It's shiny mould. That is definitely not a shiny mould. Definitely not a shiny mold. Make some room here. So um, let's go again. Let's try these. I want to see if this will work. And then I guess we know whether or not the holographic powder works on a, a shiny mold or a non shiny mold. Or maybe this is just a, a dud. It's holographic powder. This one's going on much, much thinner. <laughs> I don't want to waste it. It's going on much, much thinner than the other one. It's such a very, very light dusting of it. I can hardly even see that it's going on. But I know I'm rubbing all over the little fishy, so must be working come up this side as well and into that little fin and into that little fin and you can see there's some extra there's a little collection in in there in that little spine there let's tip that into this one I don't want it to be thick. Well, there you go. Look at that. Oh, gosh. It is very shimmery in there. Certainly not what that one was. All right, let's do this one real quick. I hope this works. If this works, it actually would make quite an interesting video. <laughs> and I'll, I'll put it up. Um, yeah, I guess some people... You know, they they would have tried the holographic powders, maybe, on um, a matte mould and, and it didn't work. But, look, I shouldn't count my chickens before they hatch. This may still not work. But it looks different. The powder looks different on the mould than it did on the one I did this morning. I just assumed holographic powder would work on any mould. Right? Wouldn't it? No. All right, let's just I'll make sure I've got everywhere. Let's see if I can tip that back in. It's expensive stuff, this. I catch every little bit of dust that I can. All right, now I haven't made up my black yet because I wanted to get that done first. So that's looking totally different already. Wow. All right, I'm going to go and make up some black. Such a tiny little bit's all I need, isn't it? I'll be right back. Actually, let me I'll just come up behind you, put you on autofocus. Look at that. Look at what it's doing already. It's really pretty, isn't it? Wow, I hope it turns out like that. There's a little bit of powder still in there. Anyway, so that's it. Um, I'll be right back. bit of light on the subject. Hey, I forgot to turn my ring light on. Now I've made up 50 grams of A and 22 grams of B. That's the um, platinum 360 plus. Um, I didn't, it's really hard making up a teensy weensy little bit. So I did that and I thought oh, I've probably got enough to do this mold. Look, this is a new one. It had that attached to that as well. I just broke it off because there's a little hole in there and you can stick it through. 
and into the little hole down the bottom as well and then that just keeps it open and then when you're done you can pull that out and you can use it as a keychain or something so I'll just I'm going to dust this one as well because I think I'll have enough left over of the black resin and of course it's going to be difficult to get in there I think I'll do my best even if I just get the top done I don't necessarily have to do the the inside like these top bits here as long as I get that side done hey so I thought this would look really pretty if it works I hope it works otherwise I've just wasted a whole lot of well not a whole lot of resin but my time and some of the powder <gasps> and I did buy four of these because when I read the reviews it got really good reviews because there's so many holographic powders out there in the market, you know, I, I thought, oh, I want to get one that actually works. And the microns, the size of the little powder makes a big difference too. So this is the 35, not the 15. It just works better, apparently. Apparently, okay, that's the one that's got the hole in it. I'm going to try and get around the top a little bit but look it's going to be the back so no one's going to notice hey but I will need to get just inside this little wheel looking thing like a little cog really get in there all right let's just tap that back out all righty put the lid on that and this little thing goes in there and in the little hole you probably can't see but there's a little hole in there as well on the base and that just sits in the in the hole okay let me get my glove on and we will mix up some black i'm using the lores midnight black as usual and i'm really running low i'm gonna have to get some more there is um a coupon code down below in my description if you would like some Lores products you get 20% off and they ship worldwide so grab yourself some good stuff and the lovely Susanna she sends me samples every now and then maybe if she's watching this she'll send me some black <laughs> I don't know. Otherwise, anyway, I'll just jump online and buy it. I'll use my coupon code and buy some black. All right. Make sure it's nice and opaque. Mm, could do with a bit more. I could see the stick through there. But I've just wiped my stick off before I dip it, obviously. I don't want to get resin in my pigment paste. Um, now, oh, I better put it into a little paper cup, haven't I? So I can pinch it again. It's a bit hard trying to pour from here because it might pour really wide whereas you want it to pour in a little stream when you're doing little things like this. Oh look, I'm confident this is going to work this time. I, I am more confident than I was. Well no, I was confident with this guy as well but yeah, did not work. All right, let's just pour. I'm going to pour half of it in. Otherwise, it can be a little bit full sometimes and it doesn't pour properly if it's too full. All right, let me make sure we're still taping. Okay, here we go. Fish number one and fish number two. Just pour it into the lowest point there and let that sort of fill up. I'll come back to it. Do the same with this one. Just let it self-level a bit. And this one. It's kind of Christmassy, this one, isn't it? Now, we'll have to be careful that it's going to go into all the little points. I have to give them a bit of a, actually before I fill it up anymore, I'll give them a bit of a squeeze on the points just to make sure that the resin's in all the points. 
pour a bit into the little fins here. So the fins aren't very deep. The body's quite deep, but the fins aren't. Right, that's full. Full as a goog. Now, who knows what a goog is? <laughs> it's one of these Aussie things. Full as a goog. It's an egg, a googie egg. And you can't get much fuller than an egg, can you? <laughs> Oh dear, yeah. Anyway, it's one of our Aussie sayings. Full as a goog. Um, we're a bit strange, us Aussies, aren't we, with our sayings? A bit odd. Alright, let me give that a squeeze. Give that a squeeze. 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 And I can see, you can actually see there's a little white tip on the end of them. So that one actually has got a bubble there. This one, well, this one's got the stick in the way, so I don't know how that's going to work. All right, but I've pinched them all. No, I better not. No, I better not. This one I can because it's not full yet. Give it a, a bit of a drop. Okay, uh, put a tiny bit more in with the black. I've actually got some black left. What can I do with some more black? Look how level my table is, hey? Perfect. I've got two pop sticks under that side, one pop stick under this side. Because <laughs> I know my floor's not level. All right, there we go. And resin will tell you if your table's not level, that's for sure. Okay, that's it. Um, I'm going to give it a bit of a spray. I'm not going to torch these because this is that really thin really thin um, silicone. Yeah, I don't know if there'll be bubbles in there or not, but hopefully hopefully the other side will be okay. And um, I may go and dust something else with holographics. We'll see. I've got, got a little bit of black left, so I may do that. I'll go and find something. So that's it. Um, oh, now it's already like almost 6 p.m., so I'll have to wait till tomorrow morning to unmold these for you. So I will see you then. Um, wish me luck that it works this time. Good morning, everybody. I know it's not morning for you, but got my coffee. Got straight out here into the studio. Let me have a mouthful. Mm. My little cappuccino from my coffee machine. So I did the two fish, and then um, I found this little flower mold, a couple of molds. Look at all the bubbles. I just poured it and then left. I didn't come back and check it, so that one's got a bit of bubbles. So, shall we have a look? Let's start with the fishy, eh? Hey? Let's start with one of the little koi fish and see if this is going to work. I hope it does. My gosh. I was so disappointed yesterday and it didn't work. I was expecting amazing things from that mould. All right. It comes out nice and clean. Oh, gosh. Now I'm nervous. I don't want to look. All right. Shall we have a look? Oh, look. It's worked, you guys. <gasps> look at that. Oh, my gosh. Probably need a better ring, a bit of light. Let me just pop my ring light on. All right. Look at that. Now I've got the sun coming in on this side, so it's a bit more sort of reflective. I'd say it's looking better on this smooth area here where the, the head is, where it's just smooth. I mean, you can see a little bit of color down the scales there. Probably not holding it in the correct light. And then this side, well, I've got no light on this side of me. I need to take it outside. All right, so it does work. It's not, well, as amazing as I thought it was going to be, but it does work. There's another one. Again, I think I get more, better effect with um, a smooth area there rather than the scales. So we've really learned something today, haven't we? The 
about holographic powders and molds. Definitely don't use a matte mold. <laughs> use a shiny mold and probably one that's just smooth, I would say, would get a better result. Look at the tail. All right, let's have a look at this guy. I wonder if this has worked. Pull that out and don't lose it. May it kept the little hole there, only a tiny little hole, but gee, I don't know how I'm going to not lose it. Oh, this is going to be tricky to get out, isn't it? Oh, no, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Just, whoops, I'll be careful not to tear it because it's quite sharp. I'm going to tear the mould before I even get to use it once. My coffee's getting cold. I need to have another mouthful of coffee. All right, so that's all loosened. All right, it's out. I'll put that inside there and put it in a little bag, I think, so I don't lose it. All right, let's see what this one's going to do. Hopefully this will be really pretty. Oh, it is. It is really pretty. <gasps> Look at that. Now, that's what I was expecting. Okay, so this is nice and smooth, you see. It, oops. There we go. Just knocked that little tip off. And then look, we've got a little hole. So you can use it as a keychain. You could hang it on your Christmas tree. All right, so that does work. But uh, yeah, as I thought, a smoother mould is better to give that smooth reflective finish. Okay, so we're really learning stuff today, aren't we? I mean, this is still pretty, don't get me wrong. It's just, it's, it's only really being reflective on that little flat surface of the top of the scales. Right, let's have a look at these two little dudes real quick. That one is shiny. That's it in there. See, it's like a, a sunflower. Oh, yeah, okay. So same thing. Where the, the petals are smooth there, you get a more holographic effect. And then in the center there where it's not really smooth. See, there's no flat surface there for it to reflect on. Whereas with the chameleon powders, it's um, you get a different look. I might have to try this with the chameleon. I might try the dragon with the chameleon just to see what happens. Okay, so there's that little flower. So far this one's winning with the flat surfaces. There's the other flower, that's it inside there. Only tiny. I didn't actually realise they were going to be so small when I bought them. <laughs> there we go. See, again, the bigger petals on this one. We've got the holographic effects there on those. But you really do get a grey, a sense of a grey background, don't you? Even though I poured black on it, you do get that sense of... That silvery grey background. All right, so I'm happy with this one anyway. <laughs> I've got one good one out of all of them. Uh, I'll take them outside anyway and um, see what they look like in the sun. But so there we go. Um, yeah, that was very informative. Um, I never knew those things. So I've learnt a few things today. Hopefully you have too, something to take away with you. Um, so, yeah. Moving on to something else, more little experiments. And I will see you real soon for the next video. So thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate all your comments. And uh, yeah, see you for the next one. Okay, bye for now.